Hi, everybody. I'm Pierre Bouvard, Chief Insights Officer here at Cumulus Media in Westwood One. And just last week, the IAB and PwC released the eighth annual podcast revenue report. And something happened that's never happened before. For the first time ever, brand advertising now decisively represents the majority of podcast ads spent. That's the first time in eight years that IAB and PwC has been measuring podcast advertiser revenues. So there are a lot of implications of this major shift covering areas such as targeting, creative, brand safety, as well as measurement. So back in 2016, brand advertising was a very small percentage of podcast advertising. It's now 61% of total broadcast of total podcast spent. Now, there's been three distinct phases in the history of podcast advertising. The industry was born thanks to direct response advertising. For many, many years, direct response was the dominant ad format on podcast advertising. In fact, in 2016, 2017, when IAB began measuring podcast advertising with PwC, it was 75%, two thirds of the revenue. After that, there was a four year period from 2018 to 2021, where there was a equal split between brand advertising and podcast advertising. Over the last two years, 2022 and this current year, we saw the shift to brands. So in 2022, IAB and PwC revealed that brand had pulled just a little bit ahead of DR, 53% to 43%. But this year, 61 to 39, it is clear that brand advertiser is starting to really pull away as the primary and majority source of revenue for American podcasting. Now, there are four key implications of this major shift. First, targeting is gonna become broader. Wide campaign reach will become the priority because brand marketers want to become known before they're needed. Secondly, there's gonna be a shift in creative away from the dry, rational, dull podcast advertising to more entertaining and more emotion-based because brand advertisers wanna create memories. How do you create a memory? You stir the passions with creative that makes you feel positive to your brand so that in the future, you'll have strong linkage when you enter a category or begin thinking about making a purchase. So ads will now have to become more interesting and more enjoyable, but Brand safety and suitability will become crucial. In fact, in the recent IAB PwC study, the proportion of publishers and marketers using brand safety solutions like Barometer um, were really on the increase, and this will become more and more important as marketers, especially brand marketers, want to make sure that their ads are in the right context. Lastly, there's going to be shifts and changes to measurements. No longer will we be looking at short-term clicks and conversions. Rather, we're going to be focusing on measures that help us understand, are we becoming easy to mind, easy to find? So those key performance indicators are things such as brand awareness, brand consideration, and brand preference. So a lot of the most significant recent work on marketing effectiveness and the two distinctive jobs every marketer has, has been created by a gentleman named James Herman in his new book, Future Demand, as well as his collaboration with the World Advertising Research Center on the major study that's called Building a Brand for the Rise of Digital Commerce. And in these works, there are two primary and important jobs that every marketer has to identify and focus on. First, converting existing demand and then creating future demand. So it's two very different jobs. One is about the here and now, 
converting existing demand is typically done with sales activation or direct response. Creating future demand is about creating memories with brand building. So converting existing demand is about targeting the small group of consumers that are in the market right now. They're ready to buy and you need to capture as large a share as possible of that small group of people that are in market. Some estimate only five to 3% of the total America is in the market right now. So it's a very small group. Using the analogy of an apple orchard to represent all of your brand prospects, converting existing demand is literally about picking ripe apples. Those are folks that are ready to go and the apples are ready to pick. Now, creating future demand by brand building is advertising to a much larger group of consumers who are not ready to buy, not thinking about your category, and probably not thinking about your brand, but they will be entering the category in the future. And so our objective is to make them familiar and positive about our brand. So if and when they enter the category, they'll think of us. So going back to our apple orchard, creating future demand is planting apple trees. Now you wouldn't put some seeds in the ground today, then come back tomorrow and say, where are my fully grown apple trees? It takes patience. This is long-term exercise of being known before you're needed. So let's compare these two very different but important strategies. One can be represented on the left as direct response or sales activation, converting existing demand. And to the right, that's about brand building and creating future demand. So converting existing demand on the left, it's all about the here and now. It's short term. It's getting leads, sales. You're doing it by tightly targeting. Short term is your measurement horizon and your creative is extremely persuasive, dry, and rational. After all, you're targeting people in market who need the details. Creating future demand is about a memory. That's the goal. And the job is to create and influence future sales. It's not about today, it's about creating future demand. And you do that with broad and wide reach, a long-term measurement horizon, and ads that are more entertaining and emotion-based. Bennett and Field have been called the two godfathers of marketing effectiveness. And their legendary book published about 10 years ago called The Long and the Short of It visualized what the sales effect is of converting existing demand with direct response. So what you're looking at here is the sales uplift over base. And what you realize is that Creating existing demand is the carbs of advertising, a sugar rush of sales followed by a short crash. But as you look out over time, you realize we're doing nothing to really build long-term sales and profit. It's all short-term carbs, sugar rush, sugar crash. Creating future demand with brand building represented by the blue line here is what in the medium and the long term is the main driver of sales and profit. But as you notice in the short term, it is the DR or the converting existing demand that actually gets more sales. So you really need both. Every marketer needs to be converting existing demand, going after that small group of folks in market, but also being known before you're needed and creating that future demand. Bennett and Field through all of their research, recommend the 60-40 split, 60% 60 of marketing budgets devoted to creating future demand by brand building, about 38% devoted to converting existing demand with DR and sales activation. Now, there is a big creative opportunity for the world of podcasting, especially now that brand is becoming the majority of the revenue. Podcast listeners expect one thing from creative, but they really want another. They expect ads that are dry and rational, dull, but they prefer ads that are funny and entertaining. In a recent study that we conducted with Signal Hill Insights from our podcast download series, to the left of your screen, there are the most desired 
funny and entertaining, but to the right is what's most expected. And that's the features and benefits, the dry, rational, dull. So there is an opportunity here to be more entertaining. And that also means you can, it's easier to be entertaining when you have a pre-produced ad. Now, Orlando Wood from System One, one of the leading creative testing companies in the world, advises that marketers entertain for commercial gain. In his book, Why the Peddler Sings, What Creativity Really Means in Advertising, Paul Feldwick urged marketers. He said, I'd like to encourage all of those who work in advertising and brand management to suspend their delicate feelings about what really creates popularity and fame and to embrace the idea that advertising is at least as much showmanship as it is salesmanship. It's time to rediscover the fact that advertising builds brands best when it's entertaining, popular, and memorable, when it's not just a pitch, but it's a performance. So measurement of DR, converting your existing demand, and creating future demand with brand building is very different. Converting existing demand measurement is about short term clicks and sales and conversions and efficiency metrics like conversion rate and cost per acquisition. Creating future demand is about creating a memory. And you measure that with brand studies like Upwave, brand awareness, brand consideration, and brand preference. Now, Nielsen has conducted almost a thousand podcast brand effect studies comparing lift between those exposed and those not exposed. And across their nearly 1,000 studies, they have seen significant evidence that podcast ads can drive significant awareness, likelihood to seek information, purchase intent, and brand recommendation. And as they look across a wide variety of categories, they see a very consistent story, whether it's CPG, finance, media, auto, tech, retail, telecom, Across the board, podcast advertising generates very consistent lifts in ad awareness, familiarity, brand favorability, affinity, desire to seek information, purchase intent, and brand recommendation. So John Lombardo says it best. He's with the well-known uh, B2B Institute from LinkedIn. And he says, one of the primary things people misunderstand is how advertising works. People think you put an ad in front of somebody and people immediately buy. He says, that's not how it works. Generally, you don't generate any sale from an ad. What you do, you gener generate a memory. And at some point later, people consult their memory. So the four major implications of this significant shift in podcast advertising, now moving to brand advertising. Targeting is going to become broader. Creative is going to go from dry and rational to more entertaining and emotion-based. There's going to be a greater focus on brand suitability and brand safety for measurement services like Barometer. And the measurement overall will focus more on how well are we creating memories to ensure that our marketers are easy to mind and easy to find. Each and every week, the Audio Active Group here at Cumulus Media and Westwood One is publishing a new audio insight. The Audio Active Group is a full service advisory for national brands offering creative recommendations, creative best practices, media planning recommendations, as well as measuring the sales effect and brand effect, along with attribution of audio advertising. You can find our weekly sales insight on our website, cumulusmedia.com or westwood1.com. And when you're there, you can sign up to get the weekly audio insight and case study for free sent right to your email. Thanks so much for the opportunity to share with you the four implications of podcast advertising now that brand represents the majority of podcast ad spend. Thanks so much.